All right, guys, what's going on? Pretty nice little evening out here. Been doing some cutting today because it's the first day that it's not been 125 degrees out. It's still fairly warm, but uh, better than most of the time. But anyway, uh, I've made several videos about this, and I'm going to put that bit, those, a combination of those two videos out. <clears throat> and I may go back and re-edit and just show some more, so, mainly cutting instead of me talking during the cutting videos. Uh, but I'm really trying to show and emphasize the length of time I've cut with this DGP oil. Uh, I don't really understand uh, some of the testing, you know, and I'm not knocking the guys that have tested it uh, the way that they have tested it or whatever. Uh, I get when it's really, really cold outside, you know, uh, sometimes when the oil sits in the back of your truck or if it's sitting out in the uh, track the timber you're cutting or something like that uh, that's a little gloopy gloppy and it don't want to pour right and things like that uh, and hence why people put it in the freezer and so on and so forth uh, but I cut with this mystic bar oil I don't have a can jug with me but y'all anybody that's watched the channel knows that I've ran the mystic for quite a while that in the cam too and I cut with it when the wind chill was negative 12 15 or whatever it may be and uh, it was a little thick, but once I got into the saw, warmed the saw up properly for that temperature, uh, had no problems or no issues with the with the saw oiling because, uh, for one, the bar and chain, the whole reason for bar oil is friction on the bar and chain oil. You know, the chain makes friction in the wood, gets the bar hot, transfers the heat to the clutch. Uh, the engine running, or the well, basically the engine running on the saw uh, creates heat, which transfers to the cases and the bar oil sets in the cases. So it's gonna heat up uh, the more you run your saw. And, and one thing I do typically if I'm cutting in cold weather, as I go to cut somewhere, I will put my oil in the truck, let it heat up. And yes, if you cut six, eight, 10 hours a day out in the cold, eventually the bar oil is going to get cold. But if you're like me, when you're cutting that cold, every once in a while, I try to make it back to the truck and warm up a bit. Uh, bring your bar oil with you. It's a little aggravating if it's a problem. Or you can put motor oil in it, <clears throat> a little bit of hydraulic fluid or even vegetable oil or something like that, and thin it down a little bit to where it's not as gloopy or gloppy or thick or whatever. And so I don't really understand the whole cold uh, testing of this. The only, uh, you know, I've not run a ton of this. I've probably, I've run about four, four to five tanks uh, of oil through on my 562. And I've got this gallon down here. Now this gallon of oil costs anywhere from 40 to $60 a gallon, unless you're getting it getting it give to you i think it's like 15 or 16 bucks a quart <clears throat> i can buy the mystic bar oil and the cam cam 2 bar oil for about eight nine dollars even the mystic bar oil getting it shipped to me which i think is the best i think mystic is better than the cam 2. Uh, another oil that i ran that's re i like really well is echo uh bar oil but it's rather expensive it's 16 bucks a gallon and it's a hard pill for me to swallow to give any more than ten dollars a gallon for bar oil because <clears throat> to me bar oil is kind of bar oil yes there is some better than others i think the big brand names like still and husqvarna is some of the worst bar oil that a person could purchase uh, i used to run the tsc uh, county line country line whatever it is uh, when you could get two gallons of it for 15 bucks which would be about seven and a half dollars a gallon they quit running that deal and now it's just 15 bucks a gallon. I quit using it and tried to find something cheaper. But I think the Mystic Bar Oil at $7.99 a gallon is far superior than any of them. <clears throat> but the only deal is it's hard to find in my area. I have to order it off of Blaine's Farm and Fleet and I also have to find when they're running a special on shipping. If you buy $100 of something or more, you get free shipping on it. So I can get uh, the first time I ordered, they let me order 15 gallons. You know, that was over 100 bucks, and it was free shipping. This last time, they would only let me uh, order 10, 
And I know I, uh, my buddy, George, that I talk to off and on, uh, he's a subscriber of the channel. He runs that Mystic Bar Oil as well, and they would only let him get 10. So <clears throat> I ordered like five or six tubes of grease because I'm always greasing the tractor or and or different things. So uh, I got my bill over a hundred bucks and it was shipped to me for free. And you know, I think I got five or six tubes of grease and 10 gallons of bar oil for a little over a hundred dollars, which still is a stellar deal when this is 40 50 60 dollars a gallon and i can get where uh the people <coughs> excuse me i can get where the people that is getting this stuff gave to them given to them whatever uh could be a little more out to push for this because it's not terrible terrible oil it, it does its job uh the best thing about it it's biodegradable you know if, if you need that kind of oil uh would, but anything to me uh, that's free, you can tend to put up with a little more, uh, a little more uh, problems or less reliability uh, because it's give to you. You ain't out no money. You know, if if I could get the Husqvarna oil or the steel oil, which I think is some of the worst oil there is, you know, I'd probably run it because it was free. You get what I'm saying? Uh, you're saving money. Uh, but if I was having to buy it, I wouldn't get it. And I'd still be honest about it. And, and in softwoods, this stuff may be the bee's knees. You know, it might be the greatest stuff ever. Uh, but in this Southern Kentucky heat and running it on uh, a day that's 80, I could only imagine if I was cutting when it was, you know 95 with the humidity up to where it felt like 101 102 degrees you know i could only imagine how this stuff would act uh and it may would do better in a a little bigger saw like a 572 where you got a little more adjustment on the oiler you know these 562s only have uh three clicks i'm trying to give this oil every advantage that i can uh i was not going to change chains out because i ran uh a fairly new exl It barely had the rakers touch so it shouldn't have been bogging down very much in the wood and then also run a steel chain uh, but it has been sharpened by me on my grinder and I got a new wheel and uh, it's an eighth inch wheel so it puts like the baby C in it uh, and I'll go over in a video why I went to that and it's a whole it's a CBN wheel or one of them metal wheels but anyway I'll go over that uh, when I get there I run a 25 degree angle on my top plate and then a 55 uh, degree angle on like the cutter part and then you know I get to go it out as needed you know I get the wheel under the tooth good enough that I'm sharpening the whole cutting edge but here's what I want to show you uh, I ran two tanks through this today and the chain was already this loose by about the middle of the first tank and I never did tighten it but there's enough gap under there I can fit my whole thumb and I still got a little room to pull down you know if I really wanted to stretch it tight I probably could slip my whole thumb in under there without even touching it and this is with the DGP oil all right and so I ran one tank uh, through this Buxton ported 562 here and uh, this is a same deal uh, chain sharpened by me raker set by me and the same hardwood and the chain is near perfect uh, it has no gap in it just a very little that's about where i run them anyway tighten them up a little tighter because you're going to get in the type of wood i'm cutting and that hardwood that's been setting for anywhere from six months to a year it, it's going to be hard on any chain any bar oil or anything because it's hardwood uh, I cut hickory, red oak, white oak, cherry. That hickory is 1850 on the Jenkins scale. And the white oak <clears throat> is 1350 to 1450 or something like that. So it's a, it's a, it's a big difference, you know, than, than fir or softwoods. That's the gap I got. <clears throat> and you can see this chain. I think you can. It's not really 
ragged or dull, uh, even though I cut pretty hard wood. And I'm going to show you this chain just to show you that it's no difference on the, the angles or whatever. They're sharpened the same. But here's the first chain I took off, and it was stretched just as bad. It's very, very dirty and gunky and got a lot of buildup. Uh, now this is hard. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Little bit of smudge there this was a brand new bar whenever i started running it and that stuck on there pretty good that would take some pretty heavy scrubbing to get off there and here's the other side that side comes off pretty easy and here's the saw it's pretty clean in the uh the clutch cover area clutch area all right so here's the the Mystic, and it may even have a little bit of that cam too that I'm not that crazy about. Here's what the bar looks like after one tank. And here's what the the clutch cover looks like. Pretty clean still, yet, huh? Which, with that hard wood, like I say, most everything's gonna be really dry. You're not gonna get big chips. A lot of people think that, that the chip size uh, has something to do with how sharp your tooth is. Uh, it's really not. It's really uh, the consistency at what that wood chip will break at. You know, you get a green piece of fir or a green piece of pine or a green piece of any kind of softwood poplar, you're going to be able to pull chips, even soft maple, uh, you're going to be able to pull chips that's, you know, uh, half inch to one inch long sometimes if your chain's sharp. You can take that same chain and get on a red oak, white oak, or you know something hard hickory like that that's that's even when it's green uh standing timber uh go to cut that and you'll get some maybe quarter inch long chips and dust from quarter inch down to dust and that's just the way it is and anybody that says any different uh i'd have to see it to believe it because like I say it's not and then especially like the wood i'm cutting up there on the hill that's been up there six eight months and was probably half dead when I cut it. Some of it was starting to dry out when I cut it. You know, uh, the wood is so brittle, it's so dry, it's slow and sap, it's gonna break easier. So it's gonna be dust. Uh, I'm not saying you can't get long chips here and there out of a hardwood that's really dry. You know, it happens, but for the most part, you're gonna see uh, and it's not gonna cut like cutting in the pine, like, you know, I keep my set, uh, raker set at the hardwood setting and I keep my tooth file not so sharp uh, to make the edge last longer on the hardwoods. You know, now if I went to cut into a, uh, and, that, and that's the whole deal with people saying they can make a, a stock chain cut faster. You can, that's just like the C83. The C83 cuts so much faster than the steel and the, the XL because the rakers are higher or the depth gauges, whatever you want to call them, drags, whatever, are so much higher than uh, the steel and the XL. The steel is really the lowest. I can use about sharpen the tooth, take about a third of the tooth off before I ever really have to start setting the raker gauge, the rakers on a steel chain. Uh, you know, this is a steel chain here, and there's probably a third of the tooth gone or better, and I just now hit the rakers. So, that is what it is. Uh, but I'm making this video, and I'll go back and change my other one, uh, and just show more of the cutting, and show me filling up with DGP. Uh, I'll take the lid off right now and show you that's what it's got in it. No funny business. I don't care. But that's the DGP. It comes out just rolling out like water. You know, I don't know if you can see that on the camera when I do that or not. But, you know. I think you could just throw a little bit, of, if you could figure out how to put a little bit of tack to something, tack to this oil, uh, you could dang near 
put a little tack and get some vegetable oil and it'd be about the same thing. Now, this has got the Cantu and or Mystic in it. It may be mixed, I can't remember, in my other can. And it's pretty runny too, because it's pretty hot. But it don't run as bad. Big difference when you swing it off, you can see it string off. That does too pretty good. But it don't hang on as long, it shoots off, but like the string was still attached to my finger on this when it was way out there. But anyway, uh, they kind of have similar characteristics. Uh, I think the, the Mystic hangs to the chain just a little bit better. I think I've got a, a piece of video of showing that, that today while I was cutting. It's still got a little oil left on it. Uh, the DGP just seems to be to get really dry really easy. Uh, and which tends to let that get hot pretty quick. And you can tell that chain's not, not dull. There's no corners knocked off of it. It's got a good angle on the top plate. It's got a decent go at and all that kind of stuff what everybody really gets their panties in a twist about. So uh, what I'm getting at is this stuff this stuff is just, it's not the greatest snake oil that everybody, uh, a lot of big YouTubers is claiming it to be. At least not for my cutting scenario. <clears throat> uh, there's plenty of bar oils that's way cheaper and way more obtainable. You know, you've got to definitely order this stuff. Uh, missed it you know i i do have to order it but i can get the can too locally if i run in a pinch and there's some pulling pro at that we, we had a menards come in at a town that i'm in quite a bit 20 minutes away or so uh and i'm gonna try that it's 10 bucks a gallon i like the uh is it the black max i think i've done a video on it it comes from walmart it's 9.99 or 10 bucks a gallon i really like that it really looks it looks just the same as the Mystic Bar Oil and the Echo Bar Oil. Those three bar oils, uh, as far as color and the, the characteristics, they all uh, look and act the same to me. The, the Black Max, the Mystic, and the, the Echo. Uh, <clears throat> you know, like I say, two totally different cutting worlds. I'm not saying that this does not perform well out, where, uh, out in the Pacific Northwest where a lot of people are using this. Uh, but I do not think it performs well in my situation, Southern Kentucky heat, hardwood. And I've had a couple other guys uh, tell me that because I talked about doing this re review and talked about this oil. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, they either messaged me or emailed me, I can't remember, and said, you know, I got some of this, either give to me or bought. And uh, <clears throat> it doesn't really do good in hot weather on hardwood. And I'll have to tend to agree. Uh, like I say, in that type of wood I'm, I was cutting, you're going to get a little chain stretches. You're, you're going to get the chain hot, whether you're sharp or not, just because the wood hard after cut, after cut, after cut. You know, if you were just falling trees and topping them, might be a little different story. Uh, but you know, like I'm bucking wood today, I bucked, uh, I don't know, probably two trailer loads of, of 12 foot or longer, you know, so I don't know how many cuts I've done, maybe 100. 150 uh, I may be stretching it some but you get the point I don't I don't know exactly I didn't count them but what I'm getting at is uh, I did that many cuts in about an hour hour and a half uh, that someone would that was falling timber would do uh, in a day's time 
cutting and bucking or whatever is, is what I'm getting at. So it, it might be all right in that kind of scenario. Uh, but back to back to back cutting, uh, it just don't perform well. So you got to kind of watch. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that these people are, are spreading mistruths, uh, but I'm just saying everything's better when it's free. And uh, you got to kind of watch their cutting scenario uh, to see if it's similar to yours, you know. <clears throat> if they're just falling here and there and doing a little firewood here and there and they're cutting soft wood and you do that exact same thing, this all may be for you. Uh, but if you're like me and you're cutting hardwood and you're making quite a bit of cuts, uh, I don't think this stuff would be for you. It, you know, you can try it if you want to, but the biggest thing is, like I say, it's at least over forty dollars a gallon, and that to me in this day and age is just ridiculous. If they, even if they could get this down to eight or ten bucks a gallon, you know, I probably would still go with my Mystic. Uh, I'd run this stuff in a pinch, but you know, <coughs> if it was five dollars a gallon, I might buy. It. You know, so that's my two cents. If you want it. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I guess I have some videos that's uh, kind of uh, dis disputes or goes against the grain of some big YouTubers or, you know, or whatever. <clears throat> and uh, I don't really do it to try to t say they're wrong or try to... Uh, make them look bad or make this product look bad or whatever i just want people to have the <clears throat> the people that's in my kind of cutting scenarios and cutting situations to have a opinion and a review of you know somebody that's cutting like they're cutting uh, because let's face it you know not everybody cuts in the Pacific Northwest all the time, or, you know, anytime for that matter. There's some people that never uh, leave the East Coast. They do all East Coast hardwood logging, or they may do a little East Coast, uh, you know, I know quite a few people that cut white pine and, and yellow pine and different things out here, uh, down South and uh, some up North or whatever. It's not all hardwood logging, but you know, for the most part it is. Uh, and this stuff just, just don't cut it here, I don't think. Uh, and that's and that's why I try a lot of stuff. That's why I like rips saw or whatever. You know, I've I've seen videos of them. Uh, some people not liking their saws, and some people liking their saws. I think they built a, a fairly decent work saw. You know, uh, from the ones I've had, it seemed pretty good. They put work in. Uh, are they stout? The stoutest? Uh, possibly not. Uh, are they stouter than some? Possibly so, you know, but I think they put the work in. And uh, I can't say this, they're, they do have very good customer service and uh, they've been decent to me. Anytime I've ever ordered anything or had an issue, because they have more stuff than saws, you know, I, I've ordered a couple bars off of them because honestly they're cheaper than uh, where I can get them other places. And so, you know, uh, They've been pretty decent to me. Uh, they sent me a customer gift package or whatever. Uh, got seven free things of their merch. You know, I, I really appreciate that. And I'm gonna wear it. You know, I, I don't have nothing. When I bought, bought that first 500i, uh, I really didn't have a bone to pick with the ripsaw. I just wanted to see if it was as good in hardwood uh, as it looked in softwood, you know, so people would know. And I've ordered a few more saws from them. I got one of them. I'm still waiting on a couple of them. And we're going to see how they run. <clears throat> uh, I've got three 572s ported, four, four 572s ported, uh, Mastermind, RNA Lynch, Cajun, and Buxton. And they're all fairly similar. Uh, <clears throat> you know, and, and the torque and the cut speed. Uh, and I've got different mufflers set on them, so it ain't been apples to apples comparisons. Uh, but right now, my Iron A Lynch 572 and uh, probably my Cajun 572 is the two be better running of the saws. Uh, the Mastermind's right there with them, 
and the buxton saw is not really bad with the pipe on it of course the buxton saw is not broke in uh, as well as the other one i uh, bought that mastermind work saw used so it already had some time on it but anyway that's enough rambling uh, i'm gonna do i'm gonna cut with this more <clears throat> as i go along just to try it but i know i've already stretched the piss out of two chains i've not had chain stretch like this in a in a fairly good while uh, just on a couple of tanks. Uh, damn. I wasted that bit that was in there. Uh, run out on the tailgate because I left the lid off of it. But we'll top her back off and it'll be okay. It's biodegradable so it don't hurt the, hurt the ground, you know. <clears throat> we'll be all good when it rains and washes her down. We won't be hurting no little species or animals <clears throat> but I also got a couple old school saws uh, this come from uh, high rev work saws which is hot saws 101 I bought it used and uh, it runs pretty good it's 390 HP uh, we're gonna do one more testing on it but anyway it's getting dark and I've rambled on enough uh, the next video will be the part two of this and, it, and I'll show me uh, cutting with this some cuts and i'm not going to show all the cutting because i had two days of cutting on it uh an hour or two at a time uh but i will show uh the bigger parts of it and i cut with two different saws that was running the mystic when i cut with this and like i said i didn't have near as bad uh chain stretch and uh and or the the teeth getting dirty so we'll catch y'all later appreciate you